In this example, we're told that a medium-sized elephant weighs two tons, and the bottom of his feet have a surface area of 200 square inches each. So let's draw a little sketch here. Here's the, here's the bottom part of the elephant, and this is the bottom of his feet here. And these are his back legs. Back here, so his tail is here. And um, he'll have a, have a big ear here and a, I guess his tusks and a trunk. Something like that. But anyway, we're, we're not concerned about the, the elephant so much as the area down here, the area of his feet, and how much force is pressing down on that area. Okay, we're told that he weighs two tons. And you probably know that one ton is 2,000 pounds. So two tons is 4,000 pounds. That's the weight of the elephant. That's our force. That's what will be F in our equation. And the area is going to be the 200 square inches. Okay, it's 200 square inches each. Each foot has an area of 200 square inches. So it's 200 square inches times 4, which is a total of 800 square inches. That's going to be the area that we use. And we just put those numbers into the equation. The pressure is how much force there is per area, or F over A. So that's 4,000 pounds divided by 800 square inches. And we do 4,000 divided by 800 and that comes out to 5. 5 pounds per square inch. That's the pressure that an elephant exerts downward on the ground when he stands there on four feet. That's for this particular elephant, this one that weighs this much and has feet that are that large. In part B, we're told that a woman in high heels weighs 110 pounds, and she steps on one heel. So the spiked heel comes down to the ground, and it's this tiny little area of the spike that hits the ground. So because when you step you tend to land on the heel before the toe hits the ground so the toe of the the shoe isn't on the ground yet. So her foot might look something like this. Okay, you get the idea. This force is pressing down on the ground right there. And all that force is concentrated on this little area where the heel contacts the ground. And we know how much force there is. It's 110 pounds. And we're given the area, 1 fourth, 0.25 square inches. So let's put those numbers in and see what we get. Pressure is force divided by area. The force in this case is 110 pounds. 110 pounds divided by 0.25 square inches. And when you do the math there, 110 divided by 0.25 comes out to 440 pounds per square inch. And that, thing's, that seems like an alarmingly large number, and it is. Now take note of what this means. First of all, it doesn't mean that she weighs 440 pounds. She weighs 110 pounds, which is fairly small. It's 440 pounds per square inch of area. This gives you an idea of how concentrated that force is, how concentrated it is per amount of area. And it's not really a particularly large force, 110 pounds, but it's a pretty large force per area, a pretty large force for that small of an area. Now, you remember just a minute ago, we did the calculation with the elephant. The pressure of the elephant's foot on the ground was 5 pounds per square inch. So let's compare that for a second. We're comparing 440 pounds per square inch to 5 pounds per square inch. And if we just make a little ratio, 440 divided by 5 comes out to about 88. The pressure from the woman is 88 times... 88 times as much pressure as from the elephant. Which sounds kind of amazing. 
And that doesn't mean, again, that doesn't mean she weighs 88 times as much as an elephant. Obviously, that's not the case. It just means the force is a lot more concentrated. Even though the elephant is big, the force is spread out over a large area from those big, flat feet. And even though the woman is relatively small compared to the elephant, the force is concentrated in a very small area. Now, what this means is that the woman would be more likely to sink into the ground. And that makes sense. You probably know that if someone is to walk across soft dirt, for example, on high heels, the high heels would dig into the ground, especially if they put all their weight onto one step on that tiny little area. The high heel would be much more likely to, to poke into the ground than the elephant's foot. And of course, we know that elephants routinely walk around on the ground. They don't sink into the earth because of their weight. That's because the pressure is spread out over the air area of their feet. Snowshoes work with exactly these same ideas. A snowshoe would be the opposite of the high-heeled shoe here, where the high-heeled shoe concentrates all the force in a little tiny area. A snowshoe is designed to spread the force out over a large area. If you've ever walked in the snow, you can realize that it's pretty difficult to walk in the snow, especially if the snow is deep. And that's because the snow is soft, and when you step on it, you sink in, and that just makes walking very, very difficult. If you could stay up on the top and not sink in, it'd be much easier to walk. So a snowshoe, and I'll get a picture of one here. Okay, here's a traditional style snowshoe, and the person's foot would fit in right here and fasten in. And all the, the, the frame and all the weaving in between is designed to not press into the snow because the force from the foot ends up being spread out over all of that area. And so you're less likely to sink into the snow. And here's a picture of a pair of modern snowshoes. Same idea. They just simply make the area, the area of contact with the snow instead of just the sole of your foot. It's the flat part of this much larger shoe. So you're less likely to sink into the earth for the same reason the elephant doesn't sink into the earth. Or less likely to sink into the snow for the same reason the elephant doesn't sink into the earth.